This is Jan, and you're listening to episode 62 of Let's Talk Geek. In the show, we're talking about MP3 tunes and the court case around cloud lockers. We're talking about fair usage policies and a body hack that stops you from being nauseous. GLaDOS says, listen to the show. All right. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek episode 62. Wait. Okay. She needs to count you in. <laughs> Speak to him. <laughs> okay, so welcome to episode 62 of Let's Talk Geek. No title as yet. Let's get going. <laughs> All right. Uh, previous previous LT Star show. How did that go down? Did any, anybody? Uh, uh, LTP uh, was the last one. Uh, unfortunately, there was no LTS. So let's export. Last what one. happened? Can you say anything? Because I heard there were injuries. Was it <laughs> rugby injuries? <laughs> you know, well, I apparently run into getting TV? ready because apparently uh, the players that have been selected, you know, anybody has a chance. So he's he's hoping. Uh, no, one of the guys, unfortunately, the the wife was away. So he, he had to take care of the child. The okay. other one had an urgent thing there to go off to Durban. And the third one had something, but I stopped paying attention at that point. <laughs> yep, life happens yes. is the moral of the story. And life almost happened today, but I'm here. Sorry for this late start. It's my fault again. Um, I'm hoping uh, this no will happen less okay, cool. <laughs> in future. Um, oh. Next time, you must you just Skype in. Cool. Yeah, Ach, no, it was fine. I was just parked in, that's all. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do the random? Yeah, G we've got G a... G G talk video. Come on. <laughs> Get with the program. I have Skype working. We'll have I a huddle. You know how Skype works. We'll I, have I can, with Skype, I can actually also even do multiple people. Okay, but still, get with the program. G talk. So this week's random. In wrestling, a Nelson is a hold when a wrestler uses one or both arms to encircle the arm of his opponent, securing the hold behind his opponent's head. You have... A half Nelson, three quarter Nelson, and full Nelson. And I got to that because a uh, a Nelson in cricket is when you have triple one a triple one score, uh, so score of recurring ones, and then you get double Nelsons, triple Nelsons if you want them. And Nelson. yeah, and the the and that can happen. It even it can it can be your whole team score on the board. That can be a single player's score on the board. So if uh, Graham Smith has, or, or, or Lance Klusner has knocked 100, uh, 111, then that's a Nelson. And then it's a rule, you have to lift up one of your feet. So it's, it's, a, it's not really a rule, of course it's, it's more a, rule. a superstition. Yes, hence rule. Okay. It's, like touching the, <laughs> it's like touching the roof of your car when you drive through yeah, a yellow really. light. Um, oh, yellow light. Yeah. Oh, yellow. Okay. Yeah, when, okay. You, when you speed through, when you go faster at the yellow signal, which is what it means, everybody knows that yellow yeah, means yeah, go yeah. faster. Um, you have to touch the roof. It's a rule. It's okay. uh, it's in the rule book. All right. And triple one, or the the Nelson came up because show sixty two is a double Nelson in base five. How did you work? That no, out? come on. No, <laughs> no, you can't leave it there. there. There's a little trick called Wolfram Alpha. You type in 62. And, and you see what it returns. And you see what it pops back out. All right. Wolfram Alpha. It is a geek's most essential tool. I'm so haven't played that much with it. Uh, what are you talking about? Wolfram Alpha. We, we, you, you ask this every single show. Yes, I do a random. Show. <laughs> Wolfram <laughs> Alpha. Wolf. Yeah. Dub Ram. Alpha. Dot com. It's like a search... And you, can, and you can ask it anything. Try this one. Internet usage per capita. And it will rank every country in its knowledge well, base wait, wait, wait. by internet usage. Um, wait now. Wait now. 62. 62. 62. 62. Wolf, Ram. Oh, yes. I don't, you did tell me about this. Okay. So, 62, enter. All right. Okay. I'm going to go to... Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. we should introduce everybody since that's next oh, on the yes. list. <laughs> uh, we have our mixer mixing. Indeed. The mixer. The Where mixer did you get Nelson off 62? 62 in base 5 is triple 1, which mm. is... Triple 2. It's triple 2. My, my bad. It's triple 2 in base 5. Okay. So there it's a double Nelson. Go. Thank you. I'm going like this. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. Okay. 
My anyway, mic is set to tad too loud. The person apparently. who once again doesn't know who from off is <laughs> this week is uh, Johan Els. Thank you very much. Also known on Twitter as Johan underscore Els. The only one. You can find him also on blog.who-else.co.za. Well, I hope to have time to update that in the very soon near near future so that uh, my broadband uh, staff writer can steal my story again. Cool. But um, I, I well, he, he sells your camping stories. Huh? No, 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 no. The one about the tablet equivalent. No, I, just, I know you're supposed to be writing some camping stories. Oh, yes, well. yes, yes. No, that's my wife, so hopefully she'll get around to that. Okay. Uh, we had a wonderful trip away this weekend. While you're on the subject, I'd like to just officially say happy anniversary. We were married 13 years on Monday. Congratulations. Congratulations. So thank you very much to my wife and uh, hanging well in done. there. Well done, honorary. To my right, uh, we have uh, Jan Vermeulen. I'm apparently running the show tonight. Yeah. Uh, you can find him on Twitter, Jan and Jan V Z. <laughs> well done, oh, 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 well oh, done, oh, almost, oh, almost. I'm missing Stu because it's it's first uh, Johan underscore else, and it's Stu underscore Z A. Then it's <laughs> you know there's an underscore. What is your one. Twitter handle? Tim underscore Hawk. There we go. Lots well, of cool. underscores doing you, the rounds. You got to you got to change that one no. of yours. Underscores underscores unfortunately. If I could get rid of the underscore, I would. I'd be it's very all about what's available. Underscore. So, and, under, yeah. and I actually checked, Yun underscore ZA, not available. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to be Yun V underscore ZA if I can have Yun V ZA. And then please just uh, introduce the mixer. The mixer is nowhere to be found on Twitter. <laughs> Some say we should actually get a mixer. Twitter handle. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, bad, whoa. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, you, you put on the, is this streaming out live? Okay, put, put this it, is amazing. Put it on the put it on the for, for those who haven't no. seen it yet. We've run this before as a kicker of, of yes. some sort. We, we have shown that uh, at a, as also, the greatest Valentine's gift ever. We had the um, Batman one. So for those who don't have the video stream, for those listening to the audio oh, stream, just dump that query in the in the, in the in the RC. We are showing a mathematical equation that graphs a heart on a Cartesian axis. And you can see who's had the anniversary this week, and it's very interesting. In Graphing hearts. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. I'll send it along right now. <laughs> anyway, moving right let's, along. Let's events. Move on a bit. Events. Are there events? Uh, not so much this month, but from next month. Next month is hectically busy. Cool. Um, so Tate we'll Johannesburg about next week. We've got <laughs> I Week happening. Oh, Very cool. cool. I should probably go to that. I am going to be there. Rats. Um, I'll see you there. Yeah. Um, which is very cool. It's right by my work, and I got X. I can be there for once. Cool. Then We're it's a rage. Sweet, Ooh. range is going to be big. I hear... I've got to put in leave. No, I've got to work that day. We, we, we're working at Rage. We've got to we're work. Recording. We've got to work. Yeah, okay. I'm also working at Rage. Um, but yeah, apparently the Rage land is bigger than ever this year. Those tickets sold out like hotcakes. Well, they're, they're trying to increase. In like, they've gone in four hours or something. No. They've brought Compu ticket to its knees. Yeah. So well done. <laughs> go nag. <laughs> so well, how many did they add another five hundred people? Because it looks like they've been adding five hundred every year. Yeah, and that, that means that the conference is getting smaller every year. If you if the you exhibition, wanna, yeah, the exhibition. Uh, if you want to, not really, because there was always those sections in the back closer to the. And they've got enough space there to yeah. actually. Yeah, uh, but apparently people. there are less exhibitors this year, so the floor might be less crowded. Um, and there are a lot of guys who I think are saying it's it, the cost involved is just not worth it for them. So you have you have a lot okay. of these uh, retailers, especially they they like going, but then they clear out all their stock. They take out all the, they take all their stock to the show, they sell it all, and then They're happy. it's worth their while. Yeah. Well, the other thing is you don't want to end up when when the computer fair the last couple of years it, it ended up to be a flea market. You had these small little stalls of guys yes, that imported that that boxes of of stuff and 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 that that also not not that good yeah yeah so no it's cool any uh, look, side the events are expensive say again any side events you know about i mean last year they tried to break the the, the overclocking records so are they going to try and i've not seen or heard anything but we've got like guys close to the ground in the office i'll i'll hear just I mean, hear about when, side events when and when they're scheduled closer to the yeah. time i'll definitely that would be great i mean mm. if we can schedule around that and do some broadcast from there i mean if our audience like to do it we'll try and arrange it I'm going to try. Are going to be doing some broadcast from Rage this year? We're going to try. We're going to try our best, yeah. Yeah, but so we'll be there. We, we just need to. Confirm it's either going to be live. live. We're either going to be live, or we or we're going to record it. Yeah, but we will be there. Cool. Um, and join iWeek. So you guys also www.iweek.org.za. I need to chat. We're going to get one of the guests. We're going to get a guest on for it. Cool. Who are you getting? Uh, Do you know yet? We they suggested someone. And okay. I, and I said when we get closer, I will. 
say yes, but uh, so I need to start thinking about that All right. now. So I don't know exactly yet. Okay. No, cool. Yeah, iWeek is, is actually always good, and I know the guys would love their conference to be bigger. Um, mm. And I think they've made the right choice moving things closer closer to to where things happen. Yeah. Uh, last, so just for reference, everybody, last year it was out um, near the cradle of mankind. So it was quite a drive. For folks, it was a very nice venue, though. It was very pretty. Oh, no, I wanted to last year, but I couldn't get away and all the rest of yeah, it. So this yeah. year, I will well, be and now this year, I mean, you've got a and much better excuse. I know the guests we had last year, those guys were brilliant, and they were incredibly knowledgeable. Mm. And I'd imagine the other speakers they're going to have there this time are going to be exactly the same. Yeah, so, so if really you've got any it. interest in telecommunications, South Africa's ISP space, broadband. I so just, got, good just confirm the dates info. again. What was the dates for our week? Uh, I'll tell you now. 21st, so 23rd. Of oh, September. Yeah. 21st to 23rd. Yes, it's mm. in my diary. I might be out of the country. Ooh. I'll just double check. Talking about, did any of you guys try buy one of the touchpads? HP? Yes. Where? Overseas. Oh, no. I, I wanted to, my and then efforts. I sort of lost track where it was, because they were selling for roughly $100 or 89 pounds. So yes, call, at call, Best call Buy. 700 to 1,000 rand. Uh, for, this is for a touch. Interface tablet, mm? dual core. That's not bad. Seven hundred bucks. Yeah, sold out. They they start the, within one day in England and in America. They're released on the mon you know, like within a day of each other. You cannot buy one in the country. That's not God. bad. Yeah. So and and that's actually really the way to kickstart your platform now. You like <laughs> before you sell it. Yeah, it? exactly. It, it, it's silly though because I mean, if you know you're going to be releasing an upgraded device later down the line. Then make a loss on your first on your first mm -hmm. gen device. Get people excited about the thing. Get them talking about the thing because right now your biggest enemy is obscurity, yeah. and that's what all these guys are facing. Um, this is what what Migo uh, was facing. This is what Symbian is going to face uh, in future, especially with Nokia not really putting any weight behind it anymore. But Symbian's dead. Well, yes and no. I mean, Nokia still has immense market share. So in, in S40, which isn't really a smartphone OS, and S60. So Symbian is far from dead at the moment. They're still selling units. People are still saying they're going to buy units, especially in South Africa. So yes, to a geek's mind, I mean, Symbian's dead because nobody, I mean, and from a developer's well, mind, why would you develop okay, yes, for Yes, so we're still going to get them for the next two years. Yes. And then? Exactly. So, but it's not dead yet. No, no, no. <laughs> Look, at this exact moment in time, it's still one of the largest selling phones. You know, there's more out there, but it's a market share that's dwindling at, at incredibly rapid. Yeah. But anyway, all these guys trying to launch new platforms. Well, here's an example of how you can get massive uptake in a short amount of time. You're making a, making a massive loss, but like recoup that. Recoup, like have a bit more long term plan rather than trying to make all your profits from your first release. Well, yes, but what's so sad though is. They proved this and got it sound. And like now you've got a couple thousand people with these things out there now. You've got the people playing with it. You know that if you now start making apps, people are going to buy them. Um, you got future ones, you know, you know there's enough people out there. But they're setting this off. They've stopped yep. development. Yes. And well, they, well yeah, the, they're, they're going to keep it about licensing it, but and not blah, blah, blah. It and yeah, who knows what's happening. But yeah. there's lots of guys. You know, there's, there's various an analysts' opinions out there as well. And bloggers and columnists all saying, you know, why people will license WebOS, why people won't bother looking at WebOS. Uh, I don't, time will tell, I guess, but it's not really very attractive. How do you take on Al Goog and, and Apple? I mean, how, yeah. How do you do it? By selling your device at a thousand rand for a very cool device. Yeah, that is how. If, if they had more, yeah, I wanted to buy, as uh, my plan was to buy one and get it sent to a friend and then do it. And I, I went today, I was, I was a bit late. I could not find it. Um, they were even tracking it, as in there is no stock left in the country. Okay, but now that's – where are where is the Amazon tablet rumor? How far is that process? Um, it's probably also September-ish. So it could be – because, I mean, that device is also going to be, like, sold out immediately, depending on what price it launched. Yeah, we'll see. The Kindle took, took a tiny while to also get – it will do better than Kindle initially did. Yes. Um, and But then the, also with the Kindle, they dropped the price. And since they dropped it beyond a certain point, it's sold. Okay. So it all depends on what price they go in with. Well, they hopefully um, will look at what the rest have done and do the same thing. 
I want to move us along. Uh, since we're talking about smartphones, though, it sort of moves into our first topic quite nicely. Um, Gyroscope-based smartphone key logging attack. Yes, this is very cool. This is very cool. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, I can quickly. Um, basically, it's it's with key logging. You know, every time before was like looking at people's key presses. They've done it by audio, so audio, a bit of audio positioning and how you type the keys change. Um, there's things where they use reflection. I know with uh, they say with the Apple iPads, um, as you do it, there's a like a little flash that goes off, and they say with just with a camera, if as you can do with a cell phone camera, quality from away by looking for those flashes, you can actually replay the, the typing. And those guys have gone one step further, and they said, okay, well by using the the, the geo, yeah, this gyroscope in the thing. So basically, as you push, you're going to rotate screen slightly and by measuring how you're rotating in x y and z coordinates you can tell with the 70 percent accuracy which key was pressed <laughs> and with that yes. um, just using normal uh, statistical analysis you'll get the other 30 percent mm. back and getting this in any android app is not that hard apparently because all you mind? Be because you don't need permission for the iPhone gyroscope i think or android app. yeah and this is part of html5 so you can build, do this in javascript Oh, nice. You don't even have to download an app. No. You can just go to your URL. Right website and the guy could be keylogging your key pressings. Yeah. Uh, and if you've got, if you can get some sort of JavaScript to run in the background. Um, well, if it can help with the autocorrect to work in the other, other than English languages, I, I'm all for it. Just to go with this thing, they've done a lot of stuff that to stop uh, cross-site JavaScript yes. running. Okay. So the, you know, the risk of doing it in JavaScript is lower unless you're going to dodgy site in which case they're going to be seeing the information you're sending to them anyway. Yes. So common sense is still your best defense, as always. Um, but it is good to know what kind of vulnerabilities are out there. And when you go to your banking website, check for the padlock, and that it, the padlock thing matches with the site that you've actually thought you were going to. Yes. So um, looking uh, closer to home, AfriHost. I don't know how many of you guys had, had the one rand steel deal. I also I took a 100 gig one rand steel deal and it was really awesome to get an, an email in my inbox saying, reminding me, listen, if you don't want to make use of us, yes. remember to cancel. I don't know if any, any ISP, any company ever running a promotion it's so who's done something do like this. this. Because it's, it's a, it's okay, give me a full sentence. What are we talking right. about? Basically, they've been running this deal for two months. Where you yes. You pin one rand and you get X amount of bandwidth back. Okay. Right. But that ran for two, two months. After... Next month, starting September, uh, basically you, you'll get charged. So if you've got a hundred gigs, caught it's three thousand rand that you yeah. have to pay. Okay. Right. And so they actually told the subscribers. So they send out a mail saying, "By the way, it's coming to the end at the end of this month. Uh, you are still subscribed. Be aware, you know, please unsubscribe if you don't want to pay pay it." Next by month. a due date, you need to unsubscribe by the twenty fourth yeah. today. So if you're listening to this today, do it um, now. Yeah, do it now. If you're listening to this. When, when the did they send the email? Live, it's too late. Uh, when did they? Okay. okay, so they gave you like three or four days to mm, actually yeah. respond. No, That's very, very nice. Great customer service. Well, if you fo if you don't follow, um, what's his name on on Twitter? Jan Fisser. Jan Fisser. I mean, follow his his tweets are always interesting and. And very nice, but yeah, ah, that's very nice. Yeah, that's that's definitely a, a sort of setting the bar of, of what kind of... Well, let's see how that influences the voting for the My Broadband uh, Awards for this year. <laughs> yes. Yes, which has come out of scene. I have yeah. voted. It's yeah. out. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so so while we're on it, let's let's do some promotion. <laughs> uh, and you can win an iPad. Yeah, the My Broadband survey is up. Uh, you get to How many iPads have you got, uh, guys actually got there to give away? Because that's Lots. the main prizes at the moment is... Let's give away iPad 2. <laughs> Nothing generates hype like an iPad 2. We've thought, okay. of, we've thought of Android tablets. We've thought of getting playbooks, all kinds of stuff. And just nothing seems to compare to... But you haven't tried the other one, so how can you say... We've given away a playbook, and we have given away Android tablets, but not high-powered Android tablets. Okay. Not, nothing, like a, nothing like a Zoom or an Asus Transformer. So I'm, I'm going to work on that. I okay. really want to give away an Asus Transformer on the site. Cool. We're going to come back to Oh, we're going to come back to soon. that? All right, cool. Um, but while we're talking about competitions, also I just want to mention our competition. Yes. Um, basically, send us an email with the front bit of the email before the at, something interesting. Whoever sends the most interesting email address to us, and that's not as in emails with an interesting email address, as in actually send it to that email. So if fried roadkill at let's talk network dot TV, just send us saying you enter the competition. We have um, sorry, 
three MSP 430 launch pads to give away. And I'm about to drop everything. And then we also, for the person who wins the, the first prize, we have a touch sensor. So we've got, we'll give two straight MSP launch pads and one combined with the touch sensor that you can play around with. So have we, we decided on a closing date yet for that competition? There is one. I can't remember what it is. Uh, all Watch the last week's show. <laughs> <laughs> for the closing date. Are on the wiki. And are they? Also, if you go to ltg.letstalknetwork.tv, um, there is like two posts down. Okay. All the details. So having said that, also, please follow us on Facebook if you're watching. Um, send us emails. We want to hear feedback. We just want to get well, to know. Okay, don't are. follow us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Yes, there's no follow. That's Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. That's fine. <laughs> cool. cool. Um, I'm going to inject the topic um, instead of going on to that one. I want to, since we're talking about uh, broadband yes. ISPs. Oh, okay. Um, right. cool. So Go this is it. not a bad idea. Um, MWeb, uh, Tech Central. Oh, I meant to add the one. Sorry. Yes. Well done. Okay, cool. Tech Central. Well, you did add this one. Well, I got the link somewhere. Cool. Um, I wasn't invited. Uh, my broadband obviously didn't crack the nod, but a lot of uh, the Joburg tech journalists went down to Cape Town this week. There's a Garten Symposium down there. Kept them busy all day yesterday, I think, and today even. Um, and uh, Duncan at Tech Central decided to make the best use of his time. And so he rigged up interviews with uh, Rudy Janssen from MWeb, and he was all over Cape Town. And um, one of the articles that came out of that was that Rudy Janssen said that the wireless local loop needs to be unbundled as well as the wireline local loop. So for those who don't know what that is, uh, the local loop is the piece of copper, normally, that connects your house to the telecom exchange, sort of. But in the simplest case, that's well, what it well, is. Technically, local loop could be anything that connects you to the exchange. Not even an exchange, because now you're not even, if you're talking about the wireless local loop, you're not connecting to an exchange, you're connecting to a base station. And the base station So you're talking to about last mile. Last mile. Thank you. That is the local loop. Yes. Right, effectively. So um, he, he's, he's piloting to have the lo wireless local loop unbundled. Unbundled. As well. But it's not the first time we've heard of this. Yes, it isn't. Um, Telcom has actually used. Okay, kick, <laughs> hold that thought. Hold it two seconds. Drop it. So hit clear on it. Sorry, we're having some technical difficulty. Th this will probably be edited out for people who watch the full podcast, right? Yes. Did, 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 did the mixer hit the scroll wheel again? No, 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 no. Oh. This was a win Windows. Plus our mixing software uh, not playing nicely together. Okay. Did that come back? Okay. Um, you're going to have to... Sorry, we're going to have to stop streaming for two seconds. Okay, go to the Adobe program. Oh, it's back. Okay, cool. Then we don't need to. And recording should still be going. Awesome. Rad. Okay, so... Um, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Are we back? Can we just somebody in the Aukies? Anybody just tell us? <laughs> they say Tim was stuck on Creepy Smile. Okay. Yes. <laughs> is it back? No, it's, Tim Cam is, is stuck on Creepy Smile. It was. No, awesome. read. It's not back yet, apparently. Not yet. Maybe we have to do a refresh? Or maybe you guys have to do a refresh? Yeah. Hit F5. No, it's not back. No. Okay, all right. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll just close and Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, we're taking a break. Yes. <laughs> second break. I just, you've got to save that file, eh, please. So try and close the file properly. Uh, Fried Radkill says it's back. It's back. Cool. Yep. W. T H. What the hell? Oh. Wait, I've got a better one. Uh, we're sitting down. Okay, we're back. All right. If you pee. I just can't remember what it is now. No, I'll have to Google okay. it. Okay, just start that point over, local loop. Okay, Fair so. usage policy. N yes. The, we'll the, get the there F now. Up. Yes. <laughs> we'll get there now. Cool. Yes, we'll, we'll, get okay, to, we'll get to FAPS. Okay, so, so we're talking. Wait. Wait. Editor no. cut. <laughs> <laughs> Clapper board. <laughs> yes. All right, so we're talking about unbundling the wireless local loop. And uh, this isn't the first time we've heard about unbundling the wireless local loop. This was Telcom's defense about why the wireline local loop, the, the copper local loop, should not be unbundled okay. because of 
if just to they find the, to find the, the wireless. Is this now cell phones? The is radio this now? access network. So that would include Neotel's CDMA network, for that matter. So effectively what they want is right now you – they want you to be able to give you like an MWeb SIM card. Yeah. And you actually connect over Vodacom or MTN or whatever into MWeb. So they can find you – but I mean, I can I can clearly internet. see the issue around that. I mean, how Why? is Telcom has paid for that tower? Yes, and Telcom has also paid for a lot of the copper in the ground at the moment. So to replace it to not Telcom, sorry, Vodacom has paid. Yeah. For. Well, Telcom so as well with ATA. I've heard an argument before where guys were saying, "Give us opportunity to actually put up cell phone towers and sell services on it." No. That's maybe yeah. better. Give and, it, and give the market a place where. An independent party can start selling. And, and if you want to read more about that, read my article that will go live at midnight tonight. Um, okay. Star of writer. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yes, I mean, that is something people are talking about. But what we're talking about here is basically Telcom has said in the past, if you unbundle the copper local loop, that's unfair. You sh if you unbundle the copper local loop, you have to unbundle the wireless local loop as well. When we had Sam so that's on the show. So that's an argument to get ATA well. going at a better rate than what they're going now. If they could have access to more, yeah, give, yeah. give everyone a or fair chance. Never mind that. MWeb could now stop providing services. Yeah. Anyone, anyone. But uh, I mean, yeah, it's still what they're doing for ADSL, they could now do for cell phone. But isn't, uh, just as a question, isn't that the, the, what's happening in the, like the Kruger National Park? Their MTN and Vodacom can't put their own towers up. It's actually an independent party that's put the towers up, but everybody's got to share. Almost, sort that's of. wholesale, which is basically how ADSL works now. Everybody buys wholesale from Telcom. And is that also, no, they're not, they rent basically space? And yes. No, they, or they, they rent, no, but don't they actually rent airtime because their towers belong to somebody else? Yeah. You it's rent, a question. I'm um, not sure. ATC, it's a question. American Tower Corporation is doing exactly that in South Africa. They bought okay. up Celsius infrastructure, yeah. remember, last year. And and uh, their big their model is that you do the same thing. You you buy space from or rent space from them, lease whatever you want to call it. Infrastructure sharing is yes, the model they yes. call it. Infrastructure as a service, and you get the exact same geographic footprint as anybody else on their network. So um, the, they just don't, don't have I, a I don't, tiered model. I, I just don't know how that's going to work compared to because, I mean, so radio waves as a default have got have got con congestion. Which you don't normally, and don't get on copper. Okay, then following that, then how can Vodacom supply services to X amount of people? Because they are happy to degrade the service by overselling the capacity up to a point where, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, where no, but now I am basically, frankly, you, you'll saw your rent stuff from, uh, mm. let's say, Vodacom, and you pay per meg. But you, could, you can't control the quality of that service then. You can't control the quality of ADSL. Mm. Mm. And this is exactly the, mm. the, the problem we've run into with MW providing uncapped ADSL. Um, this is all unofficial, but everybody knows it. It's overloading the exchanges. It's um, uh, Telcom's exchanges just can't cope with the traffic. No. Um, it's overloading our terrestrial networks because we all know that we have enough undersea capacity to, to power the continent. Yeah. Um, uh, but our terrestrial backhaul was suffering, and that's slowly being replaced with with fiber mm. um, and and even on the on the cellular networks they're replacing a lot of their microwave links um, with into the core with fiber um, so uh, th there have been a, a lot of congestion problems with the, the advent of uncapped ADSL for example so we could see the exact same problems on on yeah so with even with even not full with not even like full unbundling just with a wholesale model where more yes. people can provide services yeah. all, and all of a sudden it drives prices down because that's what that's what version is act, i mean doing they they're doing wholesale deal uh, uh, yeah, they, they buy yeah. it, from Celsius. Uh, that's a uh, roaming and, agreement and technically um red bull and red bull mobile sort of um, no, Red, Red Bull, Bull is more of a brand Cell that sells C. through okay. Celsius. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's all very technical, but uh, well, uh, let's hope. I mean, really, is, I mean, is that his shake up for this year? <laughs> Last year was when he stood, stood up and said, "I'm not paying for local um, peer to peering anymore." Yeah. So this year, he's saying, "Okay, I want unbundling." Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, look, I know they've got a nice patch behind it, but Vodacom's big. Uh, no fair. So, uh, but then take on the small guy. Uh, you, you mean you can't take on everybody the one has to unbundle? The everybody has to unbundle, or no one unbundles. But this way, if if the one loses, the other one loses as well. So they might actually join forces and fight. Both fight you. <laughs> or all That'd three would join forces. Like MTN, Celsius, Vodacom going, no. 
<laughs> okay, I just uh, I, I mean, yeah. isn't that exactly what Google is? Uh, what what uh, iPhone was trying to, or Apple was trying to do, attacking Samsung instead of Google, because mm, mm. they knew they couldn't take on the big dogs, we'll, so let's take one of the we'll smaller ones. We'll see what ones. goes, but I think it's more realistic to to look at a wholesale model as as a short term solution. Full unbundling would be cool, but you have to go for the yeah, easy wins. Somewhere, I mean, these guys, especially now, look at Celsi. They've they've just invested. Well, they, 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 they need their money and they back. sold it all off, hey. They sold off all the infrastructure to American that's Tower. That's true. So we're all, we already have a neutral provider in the country. That's going to be interesting to watch. So if they've got enough buying power, they could actually start buying, possibly offering these guys. Except Celsius mm. owns a license. Yes, they still own a, a Spectrum license. I, the towers are owned by somebody else. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Yes, we're going to move on from here just before we uh, before we get stuck on it. So I need to find the document again. <laughs> all right. So I don't know if you want to talk about the next topic because it wasn't all that interesting. No. All right. Cool. All right. Um, you can't do that. They don't mention it. <laughs> okay. Well, he wasn't aware that. Okay. Well, yeah, the next one. Uh, because, because no, we're not going to give BlackBerry any airtime. Come on. Well, because BlackBerry is incredibly popular in this country. They, they've been getting very slow. Um, yeah, uh, and, services. and the article we link to um, that's going to go in the IRC and it's going to go in the show notes um, it, it is MTN specific, but it wasn't just MTN customers reporting problems. Um, there, there may have been a problem with BIS in general. I've got no confirmation of that, but okay. th those are the indications. So, um, yeah. Th so what did they say it was a fair usage policy? And, and uh, we had people on our forums saying that MTN, MTN – Call center operatives told them, listen, they've started implementing a fair usage policy. This is going to be cool, actually. Um, they started implementing a fair usage policy on BlackBerry Internet Services, BIS, um, because people are abusing it. Now, I know that there's in su South African broadband circles, the word broadband abuser uh, immediately sets our teeth on edge, and mm. it should. But basically what people are doing on their Blackberries is they're downloading, they're downloading full-on stuff. They're downloading movies, yeah. they're downloading large documents, all Don't to their Blackberries. Them? No, oh. because you do it directly to your phone. So it looks like on-device browsing, right? So you go through the BlackBerry APN, all nine yards. So you've got folks doing 300 gigs on their BlackBerry. I mean, uh, for 60 okay, well, a month. So, um, but with that, okay, if they were smart with their shaping, you don't shape the core services like email and all the rest of it. It's very easy to differentiate. Like well, this is HTTP movie. traffic, hey? You're downloading from a normal HTTP server. But you can still yeah, very easily pick up the, the, session, the, the session to that server's running at this rate, it's pulling out. So you can very or easily pick it up. Running X amount of time, you can do. Just easily look at the URL. Anyway. Which, which is what Telcom did in the good old dial up days, hey? They didn't know when you're doing a big download and, you know, that seven rand call more deal. I don't ever remember that. No, you, I, you hear the truth about that. I used to work for an ISP. <laughs> yeah. The guys would connect and stay on for, for the whole weekend. Like me. Yeah. But there was a lot of power failure. So, <laughs> so the port, <laughs> port routers kept on restarting. So, yeah, we had a standard one. Every, every two, three or four hours, you go restart because then the guys that went to bed, they don't reconnect. So you, you free up all your modems again. Because that seven rand deal, all it did was in the good old days when you had to have a modem for each mm. client connecting, you didn't have, I did, we didn't have enough modems. We kept on all our, all our modems. We got users phoning in. They can't connect. Then we have a power failure. Switch it off. Switch it on. <laughs> Clear all the connections. Okay, we've got redialers. <laughs> cool. Yep. Anyway, and so a lot of users were complaining um, about this fair usage policy. There were a lot of users, well, a lot. We, there were at least um, two or three different people reporting that they had heard from a call center operative of MTN that there's a fair usage policy. I contacted MTN directly. They said that there is no fair usage policy in place, but <laughs> oh yes, but oh, here we go. They have in their terms and conditions room to implement one should they so desire, okay. according to them. That might be under dispute because that applies to their uncapped products, and their uncapped products have very specific naming. They have products called Uncapped Lite and Uncapped Pro or something like that. I still and so n nowhere does it say BIS. However, BIS is an uncapped service, so maybe there's leeway for them there. Um, and so they, AMTN is arguing that should they so wish, they could implement a fair they usage. They have to protect themselves in some way. Mm. I mean, and but they've got to do it in a different way. Yeah, and, and they've got to be upfront about it. Yeah, how how about is it, it being done? Um, what determines when you get throttled? Obviously, when you download more than a well, gig we've, on We've spoken like, many times about the whole fair, how do they determine fair uses policies and how you could actually do 90 gigs of legit data yes. 
And where and I, and I have, I've done 200 gigs of legit. Yeah, totally mind. legit. I mean, you download a couple of distributions, you don't install I, I three or four servers. You easily in a mirror for Ubuntu for the work. There we go. So it's easy to do it. And the guys said that the way they seriously got to look at that document. I mean, then if if we know it's torrents. Uh, anyway, uh, I've just noticed we we're mentioning something. Just look very carefully. Fair usage policy, which they, the acronym is FUP. Take the F, put a space in after it, and then go UP. <laughs> <laughs> and read that back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't yeah. want to lose our YouTube rating, so we won't say it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, so that's the that's the story. And um, uh, MTN then said that they are looking into what's causing the slowdowns. I must say, on that particular day, I think it was Tuesday. Everything was slow. My my normal HS my Yesterday. normal HSDPA was slow. Yes, yesterday or Monday, um, my normal connectivity where I was well, in Madrid was slow. So just if you general. just look at the weather we had yesterday, I mean everything was slow yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. Fair enough. <laughs> All so right, we so had a kicker weather situation in Joburg for those guys. It's not yeah. Wind was blowing. Place was burning down. The bushes. Yeah, it was it just, Yesterday. It was crazy, eh? Crazy yesterday. I hit Johannesburg as well. Also, I don't know where it was burning because it's the middle of town. But you can just, that, that smoke. Smoke, yeah. Everything, I mean, apparently Soweto side, the N14 was closed down. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, yesterday doesn't count, sorry. Right. Cool. Okay. Um, I wanted to get into cloud storage lockers. Um, I was going to say, don't you want to mention the phones that you have here? Um, we can do that. It might run. I know what happens when you start talking about well, phones. That's why I'm worrying. Okay, let's do the class race lockers. And Plus, I want to argue with Johan about it. I can see, see already he's like staring intently at the document. Well, I'm trying to say, you just said what? Cloud storage lockers. So, music, Google Music Beta, that's an yes. example. So, this is actually specifically MP3 lockers. Okay. There, there was a, a court case recently against a service called MP3 Tunes. Yeah. The maker of MP3.com back in the day started Just the service years up. ago, yeah. Um, apparently MP3 Tunes has been going for six years. It's a service which works exactly like Google Storage Locker, but you upload your stuff and you stream it down. Um, and, and, you know, the same as Amazon's Music Cloud, all that stuff. Um, so it's interesting to know that these services are nothing new. Yes. Um, and, uh, and there was a... a court case um emi versus mp3 tunes and the judge though the, the everybody's predicting this is going to get appealed the judge ruled in favor of mp3 tunes mostly um saying that obviously mp3 tunes uh it, it's it, following it, the dmca, DMCA it's, it's an american law the digital mm. millennium copyright act and, and there's a there's a clause in there called safe the safe harbor clause as long as you demonstrate reasonable um, you follow the responsibility yes. yeah. uh, about copyright infringement, then you fall in a safe harbor and you will not be held accountable for the copyright infringement of your users. So if somebody uploads pirated music to your storage locker, yes. you're not responsible for that, the user is. So Google is obviously keeping a close eye on this. Yes, and, and, and everybody Amazon. is. And what's name? Apple. Well, not um, sure well, Apple, they licensed. I, I, I Apple, guess. Apple. But iCloud... I just want to understand. I mean, I, I I haven't tried the Apple or the obviously not Apple or the Amazon service, but I mean they're more based on buy the music from us and we'll keep it on our service. Amazon's not so much because um, uh, they make and, it really difficult and, to actually add your own. And music. even Apple's Apple said Apple's is not working yet, but you they they said you will be able to rip your music and upload it, and their protection for. For pirate against piracy is to offer people a carrot. They say for twenty five dollars a year or something. You, you pay you, for the storage. You, no, no, you don't pay for the storage. You pay for the service. Only in the US is this will the service be available right now to identify your music. So you've got your MP3, and then you upload it to the locker, and then automatically identifies it, puts it in iTunes for you, and then you can download it in iTunes. No, as far as I understood, there was more to that um, because you weren't allowed to just to use iCloud for storing your own music. Oh, you'd it's have to pay free the free if it's their music. It's free if it's iTunes. And if it's your own music, there's a payment. Okay, cool. Uh, Google has one and Amazon also has one. Yes, but I, I mean, the Amazon one, they made it very, okay, because Apple's not launched it. Amazon one, they made it very simple for you to buy your music and actually transfers it into the cloud and you stream it from there. Mm. So the whole drive was to actually not upload your own music. It's just to transfer it over. Um, the Amazon, uh, the uh, Google one, obviously, no, no purchases. They don't do sales. So... It's supposed to. They keep <clears throat> yeah, but they're probably battling to get the licenses. I mean, they now mm. it's a new market for them or whatever. Yeah, but getting then, getting the labels on board is tricky. If one of them just really wants to get to the point where I've got the CD, can I somehow prove that I've got the CD and don't have to upload the damn thing? Just put it into my locker 
Yeah, and, and what Apple's the closest Apple well, is going to come to this is going to let you rip it and then for twenty five dollars do a digital fingerprint of the track, basically. So, so yeah, but CD yeah. sales are dying though. Fair, but the music in South Africa my, that my I listen to, I can still only get in a store. Yes, but my main complaint with the digital lockers is if I buy it from Apple, and you want to use it, I in can't use my Android. You, yes. Well, you can grab the AAC files, and if you want to, you can transcode them and upload them yeah, to your Android yes. stuff. Yeah, I've got to go through, but it's not. I can't use their cloud. Well, n not yet. But I mean, for instance, there are already apps and stuff that let you sync your iTunes music so to your Android phone. Yeah, I don't plug my Android phone into a PC. Yeah, so there obviously won't be iCloud interoperability. Now I want, but there is Wi-Fi the sync. Kindle. I there is Wi-Fi sync for Android to iTunes, I think. I'll just have to double-check that. Uh, yes, if you've got... The one just finish your sentence iTunes. about Kindle. I want what Kindle is for books. I want that for music. Okay, but you can't but take Kindle anywhere else. Uh, you've I can got use it on my Android. I can use it on my with browser. With their app, yes. But that's fine. So I they've built their own cross-platform platform. Yes. Um, so basically what you want is... And that's what MP3 Tunes is. MP3 Tunes has an Android app, has an I I iOS app. So if you want a cross-platform app, don't use the, the services that Google, Apple, and so on are going to offer. Amazon is the next big content black, ho black dark horse. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, th they are, they've got their own Android app store, and they've got all the books content. They're doing music content now. They want to watch. It's going to be interesting to see if they can make something good of it so that it's basically cross-platform content. Well, if but you it's look locked at into their platform. I must say, I still sense. want to be able to, I would love to, that's the next thing with Kindles, I want to be able to export it. So if for some reason, at some point, they ever disappear or start doing something dodgy, I can go, thank you, I'm moving my books. Yeah. The thing is, by that time, it's actually too late, but you can crack the stuff and get it off. Yes. But if Amazon decides, okay, I'm ripping it off your device, remember they can do that. And they mm. did that, ironically, with 1984. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, so they, uh, by the time you find out they're doing something dodgy, it might be too late to rescue your content. But there's always piracy. <laughs> Yar, oh, hard, look, Amazon is, is getting there because they've, yeah, they've, they've got the Kindle already can, um, you can actually link your Kindle into audio, uh, uh, Audible. So you can use, so the last step is just adding music. I mean, and that's probably going to be the next version of the Kindle. We'll actually do all three of them. Mm. You can read your books, listen to your music, or listen to your audiobooks. Off you go. Cool. Just going on your ripping thing in Pirate Bay, I have a friend who paid for the music uh, yeah. off, off of iTunes, all the rest of it, and something went wrong, and they lost two or three of the music files. Could not get it back. Eventually, he said, stuff this, and they've downloaded it off um, Pirate Bay. Legitimately paid for it, whatever, from iTunes. iTunes knows that she's bought, they've bought it. Can't get it back. Well, there's a way you've got to write a letter to them saying, really sorry, and then they can decide whether they will give it back to you or not. But how did, I mean, did how you did you delete the files? It? I can't remember. Okay. Can't, because I, I can, can re-download re stuff off iTunes. That's very strange. No, the the one album they, I own on there. That's very strange. All right, but moving into that, I wanted to, like, I wanted to kick this bush just to, because I wanted to poke at you, hon. Um, <laughs> Here we go. The, um, the Register uh, wrote an article earlier this year, March 2011, mm -hmm. entitled Cloud Lockers, Who Freaking Cares? And the, the author argues they're obviously in this business for quite some time. And I know you, Hannah, is a Google beta music fan or, or user. And um, they basically said it's an FTP server. We've had this thing for years. <laughs> so we've had FTP services for years and people haven't used them. So yeah, but this has simplified it down to the point where He's obviously not used this service. <laughs> IT user can use this. So this is basically Dropbox for music. Yes. No, it's not. Better than that. Yeah, it's it's got some clever that you can look w when Jan is saying drop for music, I can give Dropbox to anybody and they can all use it. Yes. I give As an FTP client to anybody. Oh, it's like, okay, yes, and now how do I upload it? Oh, you need this client. Oh, okay, cool, now I've uploaded. How do I play the music on my phone? Now I have to download it again. Oh, you got, you got to download FTP client on your phone. Oh, and then I can play it. No, no, no. Then you've actually got to download it onto your phone. Then you can play it with the player. So, it's a, and it's like, okay, but then how do I? Oh, no. Exactly. I have to agree with Hawkeys. It's FTP with a nice GUI. And, and, yes, and that'll an, give them. And that'll another protocol, them, yeah. because streaming protocols are trickier. So, let, let's give streaming protocols credit where it's due. RTSP, I think, is the name of the protocol. Or RTCP. I don't I'm know. not sure what they're using. R2MP. No, Real-time. 
Multimedia. RTMP, yes. RTMP, I know, does video and can do audio as well. I don't yeah. know what they're using. There's some other Because ones. you can't use normal HTTP, I think, to do streaming. You can. You can. Really? How well does For that which, work? If we're talking video or audio now. Audio. Audio. Uh, I think there is, H, uh, well, there is well, quickly after HTTP the streaming, but it's... Uh, the, uh, I'll tell you what, I've got music for Google. We'll quickly check what goes out on the internet after the show and we can actually... And though I would still recommend if you're not looking for Afrikaans music because it is limited out there, get something like Spotify. Yes. Through a VPN though, you're going to have to go, right? Uh, um, no, you just need to get... Okay, unfortunately you need a friend overseas to get you an account. Once you've got a paid account, you can be anywhere in the world. No VPN, no nothing. The client just works. Um, and it works well. Uh, why do you need a friend overseas? Do I need to use their credit you card? You need the UK or US credit card. Okay. Um, and I must they say... They are disposable US credit cards. Yes. You can, there are other ways of doing this. Um, it syncs so I don't need to be online to listen to the music. Um, you can sync to three different devices, including your PC. There's clients for your PC, for all the phones... Uh, it just works, and it's really nice. I don't own the music, but I can listen to any song I want, whenever I want. I right. wanted to uh, the, the the next topic. I just wanted to do really quickly. No, you poked at me, so I want to poke back. All just right, a second. all right. Do you want to poke back? Tell me, that's just a pretty interface for an FTP client. Come. Well, it's a pretty interface. Come on, look at that. If it's huh? that's not a pretty interface, then what is it? Are oh, you saying huh? it's not a pretty interface, Johan? That's a pretty interface. <laughs> Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. So it's a pretty interface. Ah, that's how your music should be sorted. You can like stream it along. Here we go. What do you want to listen to? Something of records. Let's find something. You were just well, past the not stream it, please, right ah, now. Ah, there's Corin. Oh. No. Don't stream it right now, please. There's Corin. Don't worry, I won't stream it. Cool. There you go. <laughs> quickly. He actually knows a bit than I do. Anyway. Uh, quickly, just wanted to mention a cool article I saw in Lifehacker. Relieve nausea by pressing this on the side of your wrist. I think it's worth trying. Report back for science. So if you're press there, yeah. So like, and and then somebody asked, on which go. wrist should you push? And they said both. At the same time, so you actually need to do that. Oh yes, or just drink less. <laughs> or drink ginger. Just drink less. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I brought two cell phones today. We just cool. got a new Vodafone Facebook phone in. Um, oh, is that the Facebook phone? Yeah, I haven't actually got a chance to play with it. So. Um, I don't know how far or, or close I am to this camera. So that's what it looks like. It's got a QWERTY keyboard. Um, I haven't reviewed this thing yet. I just wanted to show you guys. This is the box it comes in. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to review this thing. I'm giving it to a freelancer. <laughs> so, but yeah, so it does Facebook. And I think it's just a feature phone. But it's interesting yeah, to see. I give that to a high school kid. So that's going to be the best person to review it. The mixture said she'll take it. <laughs> She's she's on, take it. It, it's about what's been pulled posted in IRC. Okay, wait. Let's just look at it quickly, all right? So it's got a, a nice little screen. What's this? Uh, volume control up and down. So the biggest thing is actually got a Facebook key. Yes. Which so does the HTC Facebook. Chacha, but the HTC Chacha is orders of magnitude more expensive. It's a rather big phone. speaker on the back, yeah? Apparently the uh, Facebook phone has been pulled from the market. The, the Vodafone one? Did you link, did you link to the story? Oh, they had dismal sales. Interesting. Well, we'll see how it does in Africa. Because developing markets are always, are always different. Yes. To, I mean, we see BlackBerry doing much better over here does than they do, do overseas. Because you need to do both. Yes. And that's my problem with the BlackBerry playbook, is it does Facebook incredibly well. It's got the only sanctioned Facebook app on any tablet, um, maybe even on any smart device, I think. Um, or does Facebook do smartphones? I'm not sure. Whatever. But for a tablet, the playbook is definitely unique. But no Twitter. Like, if you want a Twitter client, you have and to email. use a third party. <laughs> well, yeah, unless you link a BlackBerry. <laughs> Sorry, compared, compared to Facebook, email first. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so okay. the other more exciting thing I got was, sorry, the Motorola Atrix. Ooh, do you have the dock? Ooh, that one. I do have a dock here, but not the laptop dock. Every Motorola Atrix comes with a dock, the HD dock. I'll show you guys what that looks like. So let's do a bit of an on So the, the box does that. So it doesn't pop <laughs> all the way off which is interesting. All these devices come with a micro HD cable. So oh, you get two micro nice. HD cables with your cell phone. Those things can like become quite expensive. So this is what the guy looks like in the back. 
on the side over here, you'll see um, what's interesting about the device is that, and I mentioned this last week, is that it's USB and micro um, HDMI connectors are all on the side. So you pop it into the dock onto these connectors. That's how it connects to the dock. All right, so otherwise fairly stock standard. It kind of, if anybody's ever used an LG Optimus Black, that's what this thing feels like in your hand. Um, so <coughs> the pass, phone pass it the love around. Looks like the I've got bad news for you. There's no dock in here. No, there's no dock in there because the dock is still in the bag. Oh, two boxes. Okay, yeah. so when you leave the store, make sure you leave with two boxes. Does it actually feels nice? They, they, apparently, the feel the feels they like. apparently have one box for both. It's a whole different SKU for South Africa. Okay. Um, it's only in the South African market, to my knowledge, where they do this. All right, so... This is the dock. I'm g this is like a full unboxing, everyone. So I'm going to uh, just get rid of this plastic. How heavy is that dock? Is it solid? You'll feel it's it now. It's nice and heavy. So it's going to hold it. It's not so going to move around on that's, there. There's still plastic on there. That's what the, what the dock looks like. Sorry, our focus is our focal length on these cameras are set. So front so facing. You, the you pop facing. your phone in here. That's where the, the USB and micro HDMI connectors attach. And then on the back of this bad boy, you've got another, you've got a micro HDMI out, headphone out. I think you've got a mic in. Uh, you've, no, no, sorry, that's DC in. That's the power connector. Um, so you charge your phone through here. You've got three USB ports, keyboard, mouse, Hopefully USB flash drive. I'll test that. Um, and you get this with your phone. That is really a neat little differentiator for them. You can pass this guy around. It feels really oh, solid. That's nice. Yeah. So you get two boxes with the, p with the purchase of a, mic of a Motorola Atrix in South Africa. Um, sorry, I'm going to move this a little bit back so you can see it's a, it's a big dock box and a smaller phone, phone box. Um, the Atrix has another dock. A laptop dock, where it's literally a laptop. Laptop screen, laptop keyboard, touchpad, and uh, you plug your phone into that, and it works like a tablet without a touchscreen. An Android very tablet cool. without a touchscreen. Very, very really nice. I'm interested to see what you, what you actually find using it for a tiny well. The rest of the I want to see what this is going to be like if you plug it into a screen and you use a Bluetooth keyboard. Yeah. And mouse. So, and, and I want to see how it does at really high resolutions. But um, from the demos they did at the launch, it doesn't do too badly. So I think it doesn't go up to full 1080p, um, but it might it's, not, though, eh? it's not bad. It definitely does 1080p video. Yeah. Um, that's what the micro HDMI is for. So, right. so just a question. I mean, hmm. so the power supply, will that actually go into the dock? Not that power supply. It's got its own little uh, DC connector over there, a teeny one you'll see. So it's sort of quite a proprietary connector, but it's, it, it's a standard DC power connector. Do you know why I like the dock more than anything else? That would be great next to your bed. Oh, clock. brilliant. Good Just point. Think about next to your bed, you know, you get home at night, which the iPhones all have it. And yeah, the rest of the phones don't. Yeah, I'll give and you that. You just you slot it in so you're going to be able to see see your clock whenever you look at it, and the next morning you just lift it up and you go. What a waste of an HD dock, though. This thing hooks up to 1080p monitors for people. Yeah, so, so you, you can, can use it as an alarm. To run the clock. wire to your 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 <laughs> TV in the bedroom and watch your movies from there. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but but like watch our so show. But and the USB connectors. Oh, what a waste. Like <laughs> yeah, but. Be honest. How, how? What are you going to use that for? Well, the wait, idea wait, is that wait, it replaces wait, 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 your laptop. Wait, wait. If this power supply that goes into this socket in the dock actually powers the USBs, you can charge your, your HTC Android phone next to this one. <laughs> that should be cool. <laughs> and, your t and your Kindle, and you can it actually works, charge yeah. the rest of your devices. It's a charging dock. There we go. Next to your bed, charging dock, and you can slot your phone. There we go. Actually, I say I like this. <laughs> I actually do like it. I know we, we, we might slightly tongue in cheek, but I actually really like this dock. It's nice. Yeah, it's cool to it's cool to have. I mean, for review purposes, it would have been really nice to have the laptop dock because I'm never in one location long enough to make this really work for me. As to be able to test it as a full-on laptop replacement, um, because if I go to the office and I mm. pop this in and work on the monitor, now I need to leave and go do something someplace else. I, oh, I want to go home and keep you know, doing what I'm doing there, use it as my personal laptop. So you sort of need multiple docks? You either need multiple docks or the laptop dock. I mean, that's what's really cool about the laptop dock. All right, okay, I'm going to move us on. A bit yeah, we're, we're done there. So. Uh, into our, we actually have several kickers tonight. Um, the first one was just some cool uh, sort of wedding, but uh, pre-nuptial wedding. So this is engagement photos. And everybody has the boring ones, having a picnic and all the rest of it. These guys had a picnic with a zombie attack. And that was cool. All sitting there and suddenly the zombie appears in the background of the photos. And then they're attacking and eventually they killed the zombie. 
and they, they leave high-fiving each other. So, you know, just something slightly more original. Uh, and they, and they, they've got a hero shot and everything. It's, it's very cool engagement picks, I think. Cool. All right. And then the next one is uh, we have... Yeah, Chinese. What did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're Japanese. Strange enough, we have two... East. From the east. Okay. Let me give you that. Two portal uh, kickers as well. Oh, well, from you can never go people. wrong with... We can never do go wrong with portal. Uh, the first one is from the mixer. Um, and basically, if GLaDOS uh, asks you or tells you to do something, you have to say yes. Um, and basically, GLaDOS was the evil computer who made you do all the experiment and stuff in Portal 1 and 2. Um, so what one of the guys did is he went and got a level designer to come in and do three different like very cool levels and put the uh, GLaDOS's, the original voice actor's voice on it. And basically, right at the end, it's, um, do you want to marry this guy? So okay. he made his girlfriend at the time play. And uh, with the idea, you know, you can't say no to GLaDOS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, brilliant. Points for creativity, I'd say. Um, and the second one is something else I found just randomly. Somebody went and made a real life portal. So you, you wake, you know, sees this woman waking up in this room. And then she finds a, uh, the portal gun. And it's actually just brilliantly done. It's, it's quite short, but it's very, very... Cool. Sorry, what? <laughs> we have uh, our mixer busy randomly. I, I don't think that things. I don't think that went out luckily, <laughs> but it was posted in IRC if you uh, wanted to see that. So, so for those who are who are listening to the audio or the video stream, if you want to see random stuff being posted by the mixer in IRC, <laughs> tune in live. All right, that's it. That's it. It was fun. Thanks cool. again. Yeah, thank you. Lots everybody. of fun. Thank you, mixer. Thanks, Jan, for joining us. Uh, thank you, Jan. For sort of sometimes leading the show. Sorry, I, I know I <laughs> took over that tiny bit. But, but. You'll get it right one day. One day. Let the, let the boys play. Just <laughs> let them go. <laughs> They'll come back. Promise. Let them go. Cool. Have a great evening, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Cheers.